All right, tonight's message is called Learning from History and the Book of Daniel. Okay. So we'll have some personal applications with that. We'll have some national applications with that. So Daniel chapter 1. Okay. One block right of Ezekiel. And all the prophets there. Okay, so it's in the third year of the reign of Joachim, king of Judah... Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave Joachim, king of Judah, into his hand. The Lord would never do that, would he? Yeah. He did. Mm -hmm. With some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, little g. Mm -hmm. And he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. Then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish, but good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge, and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace, and whom they might teach a language and literature of the, of the Chaldeans. So basically they're slaves. And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank, and three years of training for them, so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. Now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. To them the chief, chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah Shadrach, to Mishael Meshach, and to Azariah Abednego. Okay, so just a little historical background. In 931 B.C., Solomon, King Solomon, David's son, died. Okay, and at that time, the Israel was divided in the ten northern tribes of Israel were still uh, were Israel, and the two had divided into the two southern tribes, which were then Judah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was of the Lord, and it was in uh, a judgment for idolatry that King Solomon had gotten into and led the people into because they were serving other gods besides the true God. Mm -hmm. And King Solomon had been warned and even get, been given a couple of personal appearances by the Lord himself and um, didn't take heed to the warnings. He married uh, wives that had their hearts attached to other gods. His heart got attached to the wives mm -hmm. whose heart got were attached to the other gods and, and he got mixed up into idolatry. Okay, and God hates idolatry. The Jewish people learned that. Amen. Okay, and so that was a, a judgment um, in 931 B.C. And then there were prophets dealing with Israel and Judah about idolatry. So especially the ten northern uh, tribes were really in idolatry. And uh, so then they had a, um, uh, you know, King David was in this, uh, the southern tribe of Judah at one time. And there was this, uh, a prosperous time there for Judah for a while. But in about 722 B.C., um, Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, was judged. And God used the kingdom of Assyria to judge them. And they went into captivity with, by the Assyrians. And the Assyrians were brutal. Okay? And so then, so we could kind of learn some of the ways of God, how he, how he did things. So he used, he used people that didn't know him to judge the people that did know him. Okay? And then in uh, about 605 B.C., was about this time here, and when Daniel... Babylon, so Judah then also got judged because then they went into, into idolatries later on and didn't come out of them. They didn't get judged for it until later on because they didn't move into idolatries as fullness of the, of the tribe of Israel or the kingdom of Israel um, until later on. And so 134 years later or so, Judah gets judged and Babylon becomes that judge. And Babylon already, God used Babylon to judge the Assyrians who were mean to the people of Israel because they went above and beyond the punishment that God had for them. So, first of all, King Nebuchadnezzar's father took over the Assyrians, over so where the Israel was, he took over that area, and so then there's Judah, and so in about 605 B.C., it started uh, Nebuchadnezzar taking over Judah as well. 
So they started to besiege it. And so Daniel was taken captive in about 605 B.C. And then in 586 B.C., Jerusalem was completely destroyed. Okay, and that started a, a period of time which was uh, prophesied by Jeremiah that the land would have rest for 70 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it, once every seven years, there was supposed to be a, um, a rest for the land. They were supposed to only plant vineyards and plant and everything and harvest every seven every six years and in the seventh year the land was to have its rest well for 490 years they didn't obey that command and so god gave the land its rest by to having the babylonians take all of them out of the land and the land was just desolate for 70 years the okay. land got its rest okay okay, That's okay so now we're um this is where where they're at so daniel um, would have been like you're probably like a teenager when he's taken captive, and along with Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, the names that they were given by them. Uh, verse eight. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor, favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. So this is just one of the king's hired hands. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king. And we'll see there's good reason as we go on here to fear the lord the king. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar, he's kind of, uh, he's got a temper. And so he could have people killed at, uh, that, uh, at a word. Mm -hmm. He says, um, I fear my lord the king who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days, and let them give us vegetables to water and eat to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you, and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. Mm -hmm. So he considered with them in this manner, and he tested them for the ten days. And at the end of the ten days... Their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. So we could apply this to our own personal diets. Daniel died. Daniel died, amen. Mm -hmm. Thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Okay, so who gave that to him? God did. God. Now at the end of the days when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all none was found, like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they served before the king. Mm -hmm. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Okay. So the king's got a, he's got a group of people of counselors in that, mm -hmm. that he has in, in searching these false gods and, and, and basically the king's looking for a prophetic word. You know, tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. and they, they, so they're, they're doing their magic tricks. They're shaking their dice. They're, you know, so to speak, they're looking at the stars and whatever. And they're, um, and they're giving the king counsel. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so he, the king's finding that um, in matters of wisdom and understanding that he needs to know about that... Daniel and his friends here are ten times better than what he's already got. Because God's given him favor. Okay. And so, so thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. And so that would have been uh, King Cyrus ruled Persia from about 539 to 536 B.C. And this would have been about like 605 B.C. when this started. Um, and so he actually was there for like three years of King Cyrus's reign, so I believe he probably held that position for those, like into the first year of King Cyrus, where he was like in these matters of wisdom and understanding and all that stuff. Anyway, in chapter 2 now, now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep, his sleep left him. Mm -hmm. Then the king gave the command to all the magicians and the astrologers, the sorcerers and the Chaldeans, to tell the king his dreams. Mm -hmm. So they, they came and stood before the king, mm -hmm. and the king said to them, I have had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, 
O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, My decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made an ash heap. Okay, so you can picture yourself if they're in here in that pic, in that position. He says he wants to know what his dream was, mm -hmm. so he'll know that the interpretation is correct. And these guys know that they're in trouble mm -hmm. because they don't believe they can do that. Mm -hmm. And um, the king's saying you're going to die, and uh, your families are going to die too, and your <laughs> your whole your households are going to destroy them. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you, uh, you shall receive from me gifts, mm -hmm. rewards, and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will give its interpretation. So these guys, are their lives are changing pretty quick here. Mm -hmm. They've got a pretty cakewalk job. They're in the king's palace, giving the king some information. And... Um, Pretty highly paid, free room and board, probably the, one of the best jobs there was in the whole kingdom, and now all of a sudden uh, they're looking right down death's door. The king answered and said, I know for certain that you would gain time because you see that my decision is firm. Because they said, they answered again in verse 7, let the king tell his servants the dream and he will give its interpretation. So the king's not going for it. In verse 9 he says, if you do not make known the dream to me, there is only one decree for you, exclamation point. For you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time has changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth that can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. It is a difficult thing that the king requests, and there is no other can, who can tell it to the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with man. For this, re for this reason, the king was angry and very furious and gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Okay, which that's also going to be bad news for Daniel and his friends because they're among the wise men. That's right. Okay, so the decree went out and they began killing the wise men and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. Then with counsel and wisdom, Daniel called Arioch the captain of the king's guard who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon he answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree from the king so urgent? And Arioch made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, his companions, that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning the secret, so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision, so Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers, you have given me wisdom and might. And have now made known to me what I have asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, just a little personal application there. If uh, we're in a crisis, it's time to pray. Amen. Time to pray. Amen. Okay, and God answered his prayer. He answered their prayer. Therefore Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had appointed uh, destroy, to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said to, uh, thus to him. Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Take me before the king, and I will tell the king the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Then Arioch quickly brought Daniel before the king and said thus to him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah who will make known to the king the interpretation. Mm -hmm. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? So you, know, you picture this Arioch guy, he's... Uh, his life's on the line, too, because if Daniel doesn't tell him the dream, now he's going to get killed, too, most likely. Because he like, he's like, give these guys a little time, they're going to be able to tell you what the dream is. And so if Daniel doesn't come back with the interpretation here, he's dead, too. So he's under pressure as well. 
So the king asked him, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen him in its interpretation? And we're on verse 27. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these. As for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind while on your bed about what would come to pass after this. And he who reveals secrets has made, to you, made known to you what will be. But as for me, the secret has not been revealed to me because I have more wisdom than anyone living. But for our sakes, who make known the interpretation of the king, and that you may know the thoughts of your heart. So it was for, it was for the, the God for their sake, so they would live, gave them the interpretation of the dream. So now he starts giving the interpretation, verse 31. You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay, and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found, and the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So he tells him the dream, so Nebuchadnezzar has to be extremely impressed so far. Yeah. He said, that's your dream, king. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. Okay, that's going to be a key uh, thing right there. You are this head of gold. Okay. But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth, and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything, and like iron that crushes, but that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Whereas you saw the feet and toes partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. Mm -hmm. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Mm -hmm. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to another people or to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Okay, so these things have already happened. You have... Uh, the kingdom of gold was uh, Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, and then the next one was uh, Media Persia, and then the third kingdom was Greece, and then the fourth kingdom was the Romans. Okay, and that was the different during that time of the Romans is when Jesus came. Mm -hmm. and of course, he his is the kingdom that will have no end. Okay. Okay. Verse 45, Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces, the iron, the bronze, the clay, and the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. Now remember, he says the great God, because Nebuchadnezzar has got a whole bunch of gods. Okay. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is, is sure. Then Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, since you could reveal the secret. Then the king promoted, promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Also Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Okay. okay, so Daniel didn't forget his friends and those that prayed with him. He petitioned the king, got them a better job, mm -hmm. got them favor. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now here's a, the other key verse here uh, uh, that matches up with what I was talking about. Chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember back in verse 38 of chapter 2, Daniel says, you are this head of gold. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it said in verse 32, it said, there was an image, and it says this image's head was of fine gold, and then it had the chest and arms of silver and bellies of, of bronze and all that, legs of iron, okay? And so he tells the king, you are the head of gold. And so the king takes this word that he gets from Daniel, he processes it over a little bit of time, and he says, you know, I'm the head of gold, and I'm going to make this image that I saw, and I'm going to make it all gold. Okay, and so six is the number of man in the Bible. So he makes it 60 cubits high, six cubits wide. So it's like man-made, like man-made God. I'm, I know, okay, I know this is the word that your God said, but my kingdom is so great that I've made, it's never going away. Because I got it. My great splendor, my great... This is, this is Nebuchadnezzar saying in his heart. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so powerful, no one will ever destroy this. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he sets up this image of gold. And in verse 2, And King, King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar had set up. You know, even just with uh, you know, setting up, so putting this like in today's society, we have, um, I guarantee that there's prophetic words that are going to the leaders of our nation. Okay? So like the President of the United States, okay? President Obama, I guarantee that there's prophetic voices, Daniels, that the Lord is sending him and has sent him well, here's what God's saying, you know, where they said, you know, basically kind of like, long live King Obama. You know, but, I mean, say, but what I mean by that is like, right. you're coming in respectfully, it's President Obama, right. Right. and it's like, and they're saying it different, but they're saying it with our words, right. with our culture, so that was, in their culture, was like, long live, you know, live forever, O King Nebuchadnezzar. Right. They're coming with respect, right. and so I guarantee you there's prophetic voices that God sends our president and those that have, and it might not come directly from him, it might come from a believer, let's say a congressman or something, right. that the prophetic word comes right. to him mm -hmm. who has influence with the king, mm -hmm. and the king right. says, you know, here's what, here's what God's saying. Okay. Okay? But so far, it's still back with our own image of gold. It's like, ah, I got this, we're good. Okay? Mm -hmm. You know, if you've heard that, you've heard that uh, saying that was... Uh, one of those political slogans, and it usually ran, It usually comes about every time that there's a, a presidential race. It's the economy, stupid. You know that you heard that one. It's the economy, stupid. You know that's what that's what it matters is the economy. Okay, well, the, it doesn't matter what fiscal policy this nation has until this nation returns to God. The economy is not going to get fixed. It doesn't matter what any man-made strategy. Whatever, whatever, any doesn't matter what any accountant does. It doesn't matter any fiscal policy. The whole key is this nation waking up and returning to the Lord. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. this nation is in idolatry. Yes. Just like, and we are on a course right now, just like ancient Israel and ancient Judah were. Yes. We're on the same yes. course right yes. now, and we're already in it. Yeah. Or already in it. If you've yeah. ever read the book The Harbingers by Jonathan Kahn, they're already started. Mm. Things have already happening. The oh, warning. Yeah. 2001, 9 11, warning. 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 Mm. Yes, your nation can go down. Yeah. Okay? In yeah. Psalms, it says it's not the military of someone, it's not the horses. It, the Morse is a, a figure of battle in the Old Testament. It's not your military strength that protects you. It's God. That's it. That's it's it. God. Right. And so it doesn't matter how many fighter jets we got. It doesn't matter how many. It doesn't matter how many missiles we have. It doesn't matter how many foot soldiers we have. 
It matters if God's on our side or not. Right. That's all that matters. Amen. That's all that matters. And God's trying to wake up our nation right now. Because God gave Israel time. God gave Solomon time. God gave... They were, Israel was the most prosperous nation that ever was on the, on the face of the earth during the times of King David and times of King Solomon. The most prosperous nation. Okay, just like the United States now has became the most pro was the most prosperous nation. Now we're the most indebted nation. Absolutely. Okay, and so there were things and warnings that happened to Israel. Warning, 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 warning. Okay, and so we've already had the economic shakings. We've had the economic shakings in 2001. There was an economic shaking, and there was a uh, it was allowed. That the Twin Towers went down. And that was yeah. right where this yeah. did, this station was dedicated to God by George Washington. Right where the Twin Towers were. At that spot. This nation was dedicated to God. Where the Twin Towers are. Okay? So it was a message. It was a message. Okay? So there was it's, it's like a wake up call. Repent. 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 Change your mind. Walk in the ways of the Lord. Walk with God again. And so now we have... Okay, we've reaped what we've sowed because there was a lot of pre pretend Christianity going on Man. where people said they were a Christian, but they didn't walk with God, didn't God, walk with Jesus, God. didn't maybe sat in church, but didn't walk in holiness, didn't walk with the Lord. And a lot of people just not even, you know, just you know, took God out of the schools and the whole deal. And so now we've reaped what we sowed and we have a pretended Christian in the White House. Amen. We have a pretended Christian. He said he said that he was a Christian when he went into the White House. How many times after he's been in the White House have he said he's, he, he says he's a Christian? He don't say that no more, okay? Because he's a Muslim, okay? He's a Muslim. He's just a Muslim, okay? But we read what we sow. We said we had we had people say in the nation pretending we were Christians. So now we got to pretend a Christian that's a president, okay? And so actually, if you're a Muslim, it's okay to lie to do your own agenda. It's in their book. Whoa. Okay? And so that's not talking bad about President Obama. That's just reality. It's true. He's a Muslim. His dad was one. Okay? He used to be a member of the Communist Party. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. So we have a Communist Muslim mm -hmm. for a president. But we just reaped what we sowed. Okay? Man. Because we because just like Nebuchadnezzar became the leader over Israel. He didn't know God. <clears throat> wow. Right. Okay. So, let's just go back into the story now. I try to take our 501c3 on that, but I don't care. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We'll just speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 3. Okay, so the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Mm -hmm. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Mm -hmm. Then a herald cried aloud to you, It is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and psaltery, and hit symphony, with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Oh, Lord. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horns and the flutes and the harps and the lyre and symphony with all the kinds of music, all the people's nations and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Mm -hmm. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Mm -hmm. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of all those things that we just said, talked about twice, mm -hmm. and whoever does not fall down to worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. There are certain Jews whom you, you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Name specifically, Shad, Matt, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the commandment to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. So these guys really don't have the favor with the king that Daniel did either. So he's mad. You know, he mentioned Daniel's not mentioned in this part. These were just guys that 
the king gave extra favor to. Daniel petitioned, hey, I'm on my buddies, give them a good job. And so the king's like, hey, I took care of these guys. I did them a special favor. I, you know, I don't even hardly know these guys. But because of Daniel, I kind of like this Daniel guy. He gave me a good interpretation of my dream. Right. I helped his friends out. Right. And they dare to not worship my image that I put up. Oh, oh he's mad. You know how they, how dare they defy me, the king. All right? <laughs> so, so the king says, bring these guys in. Verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? And so he already knows the answer. He says, Now if you are ready at the time that you hear the sound of the horn, mm -hmm. the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery, and symphony, with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Okay, so these guys uh, have some perceived trouble here. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so they either got to deny their own God by worshiping this false God mm -hmm. or get thrown into a furnace. Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery Ooh. furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Yes. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what this means is, if we see something in italicized, that means they've added it there, so it'll make sense from the, the language that it was in, to uh, which was actually, he wrote this in the first chapter of this book he wrote in Hebrew, and then the next, uh, I believe, seven or eight chapters. Anyway, this chapter was written in um, Chaldean, like Babylonian, in that language. But so if that, if you took that, yeah, if if that, if you took the if that case out of there, if you just said if that, meaning if what you said, so what did he say? He said, I'm going to throw you into the furnace. Uh -huh. So if you throw us into the furnace, he's saying our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from this furnace. That's right. And He will deliver us from your hand, okay. Mm -hmm. And but if not, meaning that on the if not part means. If you change your mind and don't throw us in, or if you give us more time to think about it or whatever, all right, we're still not going to ever serve your gods. Okay, so some people teach that as far as if, be, of course they're not going to serve the gods if they get thrown in the furnace. Okay, because they would be, in the natural, they would be fried, right? Okay. So I believe they had like a revelation already from the Lord that the Lord was going to deliver them. But even so, okay, the Bible says absent from the body present with the Lord. So even still, it's like even if they would have burned up, they're still, they can still go to heaven, right? right? Okay. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. I mean, if you burn, you burn, but he's, yeah, he's mad. I'm gonna burn, burn it up. up. I'm going to burn you bad. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. It was hot. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Sure. So they're like in a hurry to do the king's business. The king's like, he wants them in there now. Oh. They're trying to get them in there as fast as possible. And the, the fire is so hot that they get killed. <laughs> and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste, spoken, uh, spoke saying to these, uh, his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Yeah. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. Uh -huh. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Uh, that's my translation, and here it's uh, the New King James. It probably means something more like, and the form of the fourth is like a son of the gods, is probably what okay, he said. Okay, okay. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. <laughs> then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. So, as we go through here, Nebuchadnezzar's having some experiences. Okay, he has, he's having an experience. Daniel gives him his dream. All right, now he's having this, uh, he's having this happen where he's, he's seeing, the, he's throwing these guys into the fire, and there's actually a fourth person in there too. That's right, that's right. And these three come out, and I mean, that's a, a huge miracle when three guys come into a, a super hot fire and they don't get hurt. That's they don't right. get burned. They don't get singed. Nothing. Right. And they're alive at all. All right. Mm -hmm. And they're. That's a big miracle. That's huge. Yeah, huge. Mm -hmm. So they they came out from the midst of the fire. Verse twenty-seven. The satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. Mm -hmm. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Okay, and we know the fire worked because uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's guys got killed. So the fire was working. So Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and not yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language speaks anything am amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made in ash heap, mm -hmm. because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Right. Oh. Yes, Lord. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm -hmm. in the province of Babylon. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go through one more chapter here. And he says, Nebuchadnezzar the king, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, mm -hmm. peace be multiplied to you. Mm -hmm. That doesn't act, it sounds like the king a little bit different. Huh? Peace be multiplied to you. Uh -huh. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders of the Most High God has worked for me. How great are his signs and how mighty his wonders. Mm -hmm. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion is from generation to generation. Okay, so Nebuchadnezzar is getting a revelation that um, God is the main God. Now, another story. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts of my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore, I issued a decree to bring in a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Mm -hmm. Then the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers came in, and I told them the dream, mm -hmm. but they did not make known to me its interpretation. Mm -hmm. But it's la uh, but at last Daniel came before me. His name is Belshazzar, according to the name of my God. Mm -hmm. Notice that uh, it looks like Daniel's got his name back though. Somewhat. But at last, he didn't call him Belshazzar first this time. He calls him Daniel. Mm -hmm. In him is the spirit of the holy God. And I told the dream before him, saying, Belshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is, is in you, and no secret troubles you, explain to me the visions of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. These were the visions of my head while on my bed. I was looking, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens. And it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, and it was food for all. Mm -hmm. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. Mm -hmm. I saw my visions of my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches. Strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beast get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze, in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beasts on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decree of the watchers and the, census by the, the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, Amen. gives it to whomever He will, and sets over it the lowest of men. Mm. This dream, I, King 
Nebuchadnezzar have seen. Now you, Belshazzar, declare its interpretation, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Belshazzar, do not let the dreamer's interpretation trouble you. Belshazzar answered and said, My Lord made a dream concern those who hate you, and its interpretation concern your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens, and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant, in which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and in whose branches the birds of the heaven had their home. It is you, O king. You have grown and became strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him graze with the beasts of the field till seven times passes over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king. They shall drive you from men, your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times you shall pass over you. Seven times shall pass over you. Till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever He chooses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's still true today. Mm -hmm. God rules in the kingdom of men, Hallelujah. and He gives it to whoever He chooses. Yes, he and inasmuch they gave the command to leave the stump and root to the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules. Oh my God. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous, do the right things, mm -hmm. and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the twelve months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is not this the great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. So he has a kingdom that rules the whole earth at that time frame. Okay, the whole known earth. Wow. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, meaning seven years, <laughs> until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Hallelujah. That very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen, his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like fe eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored Him who lives forever. Amen. For His dominion is an everlasting dominion. His kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing he does according to His will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, no one can restrain His hand or say to Him, What have you done? So, He becomes like a beast in the field. like a, He's like, a, like hanging out with the cattle, basically. He's eating the grass. He's, he's, to, he's, just, he's crazy. He's gone. So, I mean, if you were in, the, in His palace at the time, you would have the king who was... A king, you know, he had the he had the robe on, he had everything, he ruled and reigned, most powerful man on earth, and now all of a sudden he's out in the pasture like a wild man. His nails are have grown and all that, and I mean he's and he's literally he's just he's eating grass. He's grazing, okay. And so there probably would have been some talk about that, like you know, Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar. Now he's like he's lost his mind. That's my own hand. Okay, but now. He's uh, 
At verse 36, it says, At the same time my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added to me. So okay. King Nebuchadnezzar, he becomes the best evangelist in the whole world. Okay. Wow. I like it. I mean, he's like the leader of the known earth. He's the king, and so he's been out being nuts for seven years, mm -hmm. and now he's like coming back and being like, He's praising God, God, mm -hmm. the real God. Mm -hmm. He's now praising God. He's not just like, hey, Daniel's God's pretty awesome. He's like, hey, my God's awesome. That's it. That's okay? it. Okay? But he went to lowest point. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the ways of God. If, he, if God has a call on someone, he has a call on somebody's life, if God wants to make himself known to someone, he'll, he'll take them as low as they have to go until they get it. Oh, man. Okay, because he could have got it and understood earlier, just from what he or his experiences that he'd already had. Absolutely. Okay, but he didn't get it yet. He still thought it was about all about me. me okay, me, me. and so God will do that. It's out of, actually His mercy. He had mercy on Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't let him die in his pride. Yeah. Okay. He let him be like. He let him. I see. I believe Nebuchadnezzar's in heaven. I don't know how he doubt about oh, it. Yeah, I believe. Okay. It. I believe it. God called him my servant. <laughs> In the Bible. He's my, my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, even before he knew it. Okay? Hallelujah. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, and all of whose works are truth and his ways justice, and those who walk in pride he is able to put down. Hallelujah. Okay? And so as God was revealing himself, Woo! Nebuchadnezzar became responsible for how much knowledge he knew. Mm. And that's Whoa. a way of God. How much you know you become responsible for. Hmm. You, how much you know of God, you become responsible for. Hallelujah. And we can see that if we went down, I'll just do it, I'll, I'll go through and read the whole thing in chapter 5, but here's an example of that. Then when Nebuchadnezzar, the next, he has a Belshazzar the king, which is very similar to the, what they named Daniel. Mm -hmm. He's Nebuchadnezzar's son. He becomes the king. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so the next thing he does is he makes a great feast. Has, he, he basically throws a great big party, uses the holy things of God that were taken from Israel, and he takes those things, the, the holy things from the temple, and he, he passes those out and has a party with them. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if we go down in, uh, like in verse 4, it says, They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. And in the same hour the fingers of a man's hand appeared, and rode opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Whoa. Then the king's countenance changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his hips were loosened, and his knees knocked against each oh, other. Lord. Okay, so if you picture just all these you see is a man's hand writing something. Okay. Yeah, it'd be a little bit uh, be a little bit out of the ordinary. Yeah. <laughs> so the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. The king spoke, saying to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so as we go on, it's spoken by the queen at that time. Hey, there's a man named Daniel that was able to tell your dad, Nebuchadnezzar, these kind of things. Mm -hmm. So we'll get him, and he'll be able to tell you what it was. Okay? And so, uh, verse 13. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you, that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not give me the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can give interpretation and explain enigmas. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Hmm. And Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Because mm -hmm. Daniel knows what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom and majesty, glory, and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages tremble and fear before him. 
Whomever he wished he be, be, uh, before him, he executed. Mm -hmm. Whoever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. Mm -hmm. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen, mm -hmm. and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men and appoints over it whomever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. So Belshazzar knew all this. He seen what had happened with his dad and everything. And so he was responsible for the knowledge that he had. And he didn't honor God. But he says, verse 23, And you've lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven, they have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives and your concubines, have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which you do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, he still does that with everyone, by the way. You have not glorified. Okay, and so he, since he holds our breath in his hands and owns all our ways, mm -hmm. it'd be a good idea for us to glorify God. Amen. 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 For everyone. Too. Hallelujah. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the inscription that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, abharshin. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Mm. Mm. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balance and, and found wanting. Mm -hmm. Paris, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Mm. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Mm. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom, mm. being about 62 years old. Mm. So it was already... It was already, they were already, the Medes were already on the way. It was ready. Oh, they were already on the way to take it over. And they, and they didn't know that. You know, this king didn't know that. And so, God put this king down. See, I believe, you know, God would, have, God would have had it. So Nebuchadnezzar is the king of Babylon, who was the ruler of all the nations. Nebuchadnezzar gets this revelation that God is God, and tells everybody that God is God. And so then, the next generation is supposed to pass that down. His son is supposed to still be passing that information. This is the, who, this is the true God. Here's be telling the testimonies. Here's what happened with my dad. Here's what happened here. Here's here's the things of Daniel. Here's the it should have still been having Daniel at his right hand. Okay, but he forgot about him. All right, and so it's still it's the same in our in our nation. Okay. It used, to be a, it used to be a Christian nation, and people were bringing up their children in the way they should go. Okay, When they're older, the Bible says they won't depart from it. But now we're, now we're starting to be two, three generations in where a lot of people even have, haven't even heard of God or haven't heard of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Because their parents walked away, or their parents' parents walked away. And so now we have, we're starting to have, now be raised up in a generation that... Not only have they not heard about Jesus, but their parents didn't either. Uh -huh. And we're starting to see the fruit of that. Jesus. We're starting to see the fruit of that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay? And see, in the Bible, in the New Testament, God says the ways of ignorance He used to pass over. The ignorance of men, He said, yeah, I used to, yeah, it was like, okay, I understand they're ignorant because they didn't have revelation. But now Jesus has been here. He's been on the cross. It's historical knowledge. He's been risen. There's been more. There's a more historical background for that being true, even in the natural. There's men that have tried to prove that that didn't happen. That became Christians. That have wrote books about it. They went out to. They were like reporters. Like oh, I'm going to go out and prove this. What didn't happen? And they did all the research. And they proved like what happened was they became a Christian. Amen. Because they proved it. It is true. Amen. Even in the natural. That's right. You can look up secular stuff mm -hmm. and prove that Jesus did, was there. Like Josephus. He had historical records of what That's happened. You know? That Jesus was who he said he was. Mm -hmm. 
Okay? And so us that know Him, know that it's true too. Because if you're born again, then you know that you know that you know because you have the Spirit of God lives inside you. So you can't, you can't talk us out of it with head knowledge. Okay? We have experience with the Lord. Okay? Religion is just like, you know, thinking about it in your head and I think maybe, maybe that happened and all that. Okay? I've been there before. All right? But when you give Jesus your life, uh -huh. if you decide, you know, I, 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 I surrender. I, I now, most people, we get to our, not everybody, because sometimes people get trained up in the ways of the Lord. But a lot of us have a Nebuchadnezzar experience. Okay. Where we get done to the end of ourself, mm -hmm. and we got to go, God help. Amen. Jesus help. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright? Yeah. So that ends up being good, though. Yeah. Right. It's good if we get the revelation sooner than later. Amen. It's going to be kind of later, but I'm still thankful. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so we have we see here uh, in conclusion we see what that uh, that God has everyone's breath. It says in His hands. Hallelujah. He's the one that raises up the kings. Yes. He's the one that raises up the president. Yes. He's the one. It says He's in charge of all authority. All of them. There's no authority except for what He's been given. Amen. We also see that our position is to be respectful to the authority, even if the authority is evil. Oh. We still we're under. A, we we still submit. To the authority, yeah. but we don't serve their gods. Amen. We're respectful. Amen. We honor the position, Amen. but we don't honor their gods. Amen. We don't honor the god of the economy. Amen. We don't yeah. honor the spirit of mammon. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's okay. Right. That's right. We don't we don't serve the god of pleasure. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, now there's pleasures in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Okay. Christianity is not boring. Right. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Okay, He still does miracles today. He still heals today. Yes. He gives us the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Yeah. He, he, he desires us to partner with Him. Yeah. Not just to, like, yes, pray a prayer and then have a miserable life before he, we go to heaven. He says, my peace that I give to you. Not as the world gives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then we can see the dangers of pride. Okay? And so if we look at this as a, on a national basis, we can do it on a, on a personal basis or we can look at it on a national basis. The United States of America is full of pride. Yeah, it is. Pride. Okay? It even says it. We're, um, we're proud to be an American. Okay? I'm not saying that's all bad. Okay? It's all, we have that. It's okay. It's okay. You know, we can be like proud of our country and what it stands for in that. Especially what it used to stand for. Yes. But not like proud in your face God. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the nations became. Mm -hmm. In your face God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, God I know that your word says okay when that could be on an individual basis mm -hmm. you know, like like he had the, that King Nebuchadnezzar got a word mm -hmm. you are the head of gold and all this other stuff's going to happen King Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. And he's like nah that's not going to happen. I'm the head of gold, and I'm going to be the, the whole thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's the same for the United States. There's words for the United States. Repent, turn on them back onto the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Return to me. Amen. The Bible says, return to me. Return to me, and I'll return to you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Return to me, and I'll return. You know, the Bible says in Chronicles about, if my people that are called by my name yeah. will turn from their wicked yeah. ways and humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Seek my face. Well, uh -huh. Amen. I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. Amen. Okay, that's what it's that's what it's going to take right now. Is some people of God getting back to the ways of God. Uh -huh. Getting back to the ways of God and crying out for God. Amen. Yeah. Turning from the world, yes, turning back to God, yes, God. And, right. and, and telling people the truth. Come on. Shona. And telling people the truth. Otherwise, we got ISIS is already at the borders. Right. They're already in. Yeah. There's nuclear bombs already in the nation. Right. That's like it's public fact. They just know it. They don't know where they're at. Right. ISIS is already in the nation. They don't know where they're at. And what I mean, so what I mean by that is there's already the Syrians and the Babylonians and all that. Yeah. Metaphorically, they're already here if we don't get it. Right. If we don't get it. And have a returning unto the Lord in the Amen. nation. Amen. 
It's already going to happen. Mm -hmm. This we're already in what's called the Shemitah year. Okay? So we have Jonathan Kahn who wrote The Harbingers. Also has a book out now called The Shemitah. And it's every seven years. Okay? And so we're now on that pattern of Israel. The same pattern... It, we're, see, God didn't change His calendar. We, we change in the 300s. The calendar changed, but God's still on the Hebrew calendar. Okay, and so by coming up this September 13th, and God's calendar will be a dar 29, and that's a day where the same day a dar 29 is when 9/11 happened in 2008. A dar 29 is when the stock market crashed 777 points. Okay, so that's God's number, sevens. So it was like, hey, he's trying to get somebody to get it. He's trying to get somebody to get it. Yeah, and so now 2015, September 13th, is a dollar 29 again. All right? And so also there's a book out by, I can't remember the name of the guy that did it. Um, what is it? No, it's John something. Um, As America's Done to Israel. Those things have been going on too. And so as I'll bless those who bless Israel, I'll curse those who curse Israel, it still goes on. And so if you have a nation that's trying to divide Israel, trying to divide Jerusalem, prophetic words from prophets is, if you're the, if you're the ones that divide Israel, then your land will be divided. Okay? Like, boom! Like a volcano. Like, I mean, an earthquake could like go right through our nation. Okay? So we better vote Bible when it comes up. Amen. We better vote for someone that, that's going to stand up for the ways of God. Amen. In all positions. Jesus. Okay? And pray for our leaders that they're hearing from heaven. Mm -hmm. The right heaven. Amen. Right. But we need to we need to pray. We need to pray. Amen. And then we also need to have we need to be like we need to, if, if something happens, Jesus. just like these guys, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, those guys, they already had their mind made up who they were going to serve. Amen. Okay. And so if we have if we have someone coming to, to cast us into the fire or maybe the firing squad someday, mm -hmm. it's possible. Right. It's possible. We already got to have our mind made up. All right. Are we going to go ahead and get into the fire and trust God to deliver us? Yes, God. Whether it happens right then, absent from the body, present with the Lord, mm -hmm. or or a miracle, or God shows up with the miracle, miracle, and we still live here. Either way, we got to know right. that we're not going to deny the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you, and uh, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for this word that went forth, Father. Father, we pray, Father, for this nation, God. God, mercy. Mercy. We pray, Father, that we have a people that will return our hearts unto you and, a, uh, and unto your ways, Lord. Thank you. Father, we pray for our leaders that you would raise up men and women of God that would walk in your ways. And just even as Nebuchadnezzar, Father, had a revelation of who you are and spoke it out who you are, that you are the King of kings, that you are the Lord of lords, that you are the only true God. We pray, Father, for that revelation again for our, this nation, Lord. Yeah. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pray if my people.